Hey, it's Paul with RackOutfitters.com. Here to show you the Rocky Mounts Tomahawk Upright Bicycle Carrier. Here we have it. It's uh, in a box. This is how you can expect delivery on it. It's a hefty box that'll fully protect it in transit. And we're going to show you from box to fully assembled uh, and some features about it. So let me get started. First, you just got to cut off the, uh, the banding. And then that's about it for unboxing it. Um, the rack is in the box in basically two pieces. So we have the rear section of the tray. As far as construction goes, you can see this is a high quality extruded aluminum tray, multi-wall design, very stiff and strong. It has a very durable powder coated finish for long lasting corrosion resistance. And okay, so that that's the uh, front portion, the rear portion, and then here is a another box that'll have some of the uh, individual parts inside. Let's get into that. Although I got to be careful cutting with a knife to make sure we don't cut anything inside the box. We did okay there. Okay, so all right, that's empty now. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is just go through your parts. Make sure that you've got everything. So these are your wheel straps and also your wheel strap extensions. This rack is uh, designed to where it can work on a really wide range of different bicycle tire sizes, including the five inch wide fat tire bikes, which is uh, which is kind of unique nowadays. Not a whole lot of racks can accommodate those bigger uh, fat tire bikes right out of the box without some special adapters. Okay, so I'm getting all my parts unpacked, identifying what I've got here. So I've got, uh, I know that this is the um, rear tray mounting bracket. These are the mounting brackets for the front. I've got my wheel straps, tray end caps, they provide a couple tools here to help me with the uh, installation so I don't have to use my own, and then a couple fasteners. All right, so we can go ahead and get started. I've got the instructions. Of course, you want to follow these instructions step by step, and um, along with all the uh, user notes that are accompanying that. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get this tray assembled. I'm going to remove... Uh, this rear plate first and uh, actually this is the first time I've actually done an install assembly with one of these so I have to kind of get used to it myself this is an outer plastic cover which will offer a high level of security I might have to get something to pry this off because it is very stiff plastic there it goes okay I was able to get that off. Um, really tough plastic though, very stiff and strong plastic. You can tell it's not going to uh, wear out in any anytime soon. Okay, so um, here I can see we've got to assemble the wheel chalk. And I guess they have that unassembled so that it can fit in the box and maybe because it's part of the manufacturing. Okay, so there's two little little screws that we need to thread into there. As always, you want to thread as far as you can with your fingers to ensure that you're threading in straight. If you feel too much resistance, like here I'm kind of feeling a lot of resistance, so maybe it's not in perfect alignment. So I'm going to reposition that until I feel comfortable that it's actually threading in where it's supposed to thread in. And there's no... no resistance to where it's going to strip the threading. Yeah, I don't like that. It is... Let me push it down a little harder to get the hole aligned with the threads. There, I got it. Okay, I feel I got it now. Still a little hard to get in, but I know it's going in without cross-threading it, and that is the key with any fastener that you install. Okay, easy enough. So, got that together. 
So this, of course, is the part that will uh, be bracing the back of the tire when you have the, the wheel hook up and over the tire. It's going to be pulling it back into that. So that's that's what that the purpose is for that. Okay, so now um, I can see here we have a slot, and that's going to match up with the uh, slot here and the underside of this uh, tray. So th so these two, it's pretty clear and obvious where it's going to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and because that's exactly how that one's set up. And so I think first, I'm sure these are too tight. So let me go ahead and loosen those up. They typically will have something like that tightened in order for it to uh, not vibrate loose while it's in transit. Okay, so it's also got a little bit of spring tension there to it. So I have to lift up in order for it to get um, get down in there and I see there is a hole right there you know what I think I don't think that hole is used I think it just goes in because I see there's also a hole on the opposite end there and that is most likely eh, I'm not sure what that's for but Let's move on because I'm pretty confident that it doesn't go in the whole whole side. Okay, so now I'm using the other size wrench. Got to tighten that up, and now there's another another fastener there. Okay, there it is. And that is definitely a stout connection to the. Uh, to this main plate here. So, and while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and check the ones that were done at the factory. Those feel good and tight. And I've got mine the same tightness. Very good. Okay, so I'll flip that back. And then next, we've got the uh, mounting hardware that is used to connect uh, this plate to your load bars. And since I mentioned load bars, this can attach to a super wide range of different load bars. So it can be your load bars that are uh, installed from your vehicle's manufacturer, uh, or uh, it can be aftermarket load bars. And really, there's not many, if any, load bar that it cannot attach to. I think the main rule of thumb is that if your factory load bars have a weight rating capacity of at least a hundred pounds then you can carry up to two of these carriers on those bars if you have aftermarket load bars you'll be able to carry even more than two because uh, those are typically quite a bit stiffer and stronger okay so I'm having to get this uh, loosened up and it's got resistance because from what I can tell the nut that's embedded in this plastic underbar plate is a nylock nut and that's a good thing that means that it's um, that means that it is less likely to loosen up the nylon that's inside the nut is gripping the threads of the bolt and that is uh, a good feature to have because it's less likely to loosen up uh, when you're using it okay so here I see that on the underside here there's two circular holes which correspond with where those uh, nuts are there, so I'll put that in place. This will be the underbar bracket. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run that through there and I'm going to go ahead and get it started. Another pretty clever idea with what Rock, Rocky Mounts has done is they've got it set to where one bolt length can actually accommodate two different thicknesses of load bars. So as I have it here this bolt length is for uh, uh, thin load bars, but I can actually remove this spacer entirely so that the bolt is much longer, plain and simple. Sometimes the simplest ideas are the best. In this case, uh, I'm going to keep it with uh, the spacer in there. That takes away some of the bolt length. And Okay, well here's one of those things you run into. There's a slight little burr in that hole that helped, was stopping me from pushing that 
bolt through. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave uh, this one attached and that one loose. Although while I'm jostling around putting the second one on, it'll I don't want it to flop around too much. So I'm just going to give it like a half turn there. And I can easily, when I get to the vehicle, I can easily unscrew that and uh, get it back on. Okay, so uh, same thing. If you don't need to watch me do this exact same thing over again, just skip ahead about a about a minute, and that's fine too. But I'll try to make it quick because you've already seen it once. But that's just uh, the nature of assembly here. Okay, but while I'm doing this, um, I can tell you that out of the box, the Tomahawk is set to um, load a bicycle from the uh, driver's side. So as it is now, uh, the handle, you can see the vehicle behind me, um, and the handle here, it, you want that to be towards the outside of the vehicle and so this would be um, currently set up to accommodate um, driver side loading and unloading and this, this this carrier is designed to where you can convert it to passenger side loading as well and actually sometimes passenger side loading is preferable especially if it's just uh, the one bike that you're loading and unloading because it is safer and more convenient sometimes to load a bicycle from the passenger side since you're especially if you're parallel parked and uh, and you're uh, you've got traffic going by you you can load and unload from the curb side and not only that you got the height of the curb itself uh, so that that's just a, makes you a little bit taller so that you can uh, reach the carrier and load the bike just that much easier. Okay, so there we go. We uh, got the mounting hardware installed on the front and the back. Uh, we've got these uh, wheel holders. I'm gonna take off this extension piece and show you how these, uh, these go on. So as it is right now, it's set up for the um, driver's side. So we want the uh, loose end, the the, uh, this end um, being connected at the driver's side. So to do that, um, you can see how this extrusion of this, these different tracks, and all you're gonna do is just run this into those, to that track on this side. There we go. And then this uh, connector on the opposite side. It's got, gotta get those in alignment. There it goes. Okay, now what's nice about this is that it slides back and forth and you can get get a position to where it's going to be right in line with where your wheel is. Next we got, instead of just having a raw end of the tray there, Rocky Mounts gives you a nice touch which is the end, ca end cap for the tray. And there is, uh, just so you can see what I'm doing here, there's a little flexible tab that I'm going to have to press upwards on in order for it to get over the lip and snapped into place. So I don't think that's ever going to come off until you take it off. It's on there good and tight. Uh, back to the opposite end. Uh, do the same thing. So we'll run, oops, let me, let me stop and don't get ahead of myself. We also have this. This is the um, uh, rear wheel, uh, rear tray mounting bracket. And I'm going to turn it this way, and you've got this portion right here, which uh, slides into its own independent track. So you can see where I'm going to go with it right here. So it goes up and in this track here. There it goes. By the way, that felt is just there to uh, help minimize vibrations and any possible clanking or anything like that. Now we can go ahead and run this on. So what's What's interesting and a nice feature about this design is this track where the strap is, is uh, sliding back and forth is independent of the track that's holding this rear wheel mounting hardware. So that gives you the ability to slide the two back across one another, which is fantastic, a very nice feature. You don't find that on every rack. And that's nice because 
if your bike happens to fall, the back wheel happens to fall right in line with the, the rear uh, load bar, you don't have to twist it over to the side or do anything awkward like that. Or if you go from a short wheelbase bike to a long wheelbase bike and you have to move this, you don't have to disassemble it, anything. So if you've ever dealt with that before with another rack, um, this will be a nice upgrade and convenient feature to have. Okay, let me get that on. Okay. And lastly, we're going to put on the rear tray end cap. Okay, there we go. Next, we move on to the cover plate that we have here. So this, all these uh, fasteners are exposed and uh, can potentially be uh, unscrewed by anyone. So this cover plate provides not only a good appearance to it, um, also helps with uh, airflow and aerodynamics, but also as a security measure as well. So the way this, this cover works is you have the two tabs in front that engage into those two square holes at the front of the plate and then drop down onto the back. Now you saw earlier how these these wedges snap in and of course we have these uh, bolts sticking up too high to do that but uh, that's how that's covered. Now at that point it's a deterrent because it's a visual deterrent but you have the ability to actually purchase matched locks that that go into this lock housing and you can actually lock it with a key. So that's a Rocky Mounts key. You plug it into there, turn the lock, and you have a very strong theft deterrent. In addition to locking the carrier to your load bars, you can also lock the bicycle to the carrier. So here is another lock housing and that's where you'd put in another Rocky Mount lock cylinder. And so if you're purchasing uh, this carrier and you want to lock both of these then you want to buy a set of two and you can get those in a match set if you're buying two or more of these you can buy additional locks in match sets so it goes one two four six and eight sets all with a match key so um, it's a great system excellent security and very convenient because it's right there when and where you need it okay so now we're at the stage where we can take it over to the vehicle behind me and I'm going to take the wrench and carry this over and show you the um, installation onto a roof rack. So here are the vehicles behind me. I'm just going to go ahead and get it set up there and I'm going to open up the back door so I have something high to stand on, the threshold of the back door. And we discussed earlier how I just gave these back screws just a couple turns so I can easily unscrew it and get that underbar mounting hardware attached. Okay, so um, at, I think we discussed earlier how you have a wide range of different bar types that you can attach this mounting hardware to. So here I'm just going to lift it up and over and swing those underbar plates back around and if I needed more more bolt length I could flip this plastic uh, spacer away but I can feel now that it's gonna match that nicely and I'm just gonna hold it together and get it started so I got that one started let me do this other side it feels a little front heavy as well because if I let go the back end wants to flip up so I'm gonna get to that quicker so that I don't have to worry about it keeping flipping up on me as it is now. Okay, so I'm going to get that going. Just a few threads. Okay, so now let me turn my attention to this back one. Okay, so it's exactly the same mechanism with the same exact underbar plate. Same exact bolts with the uh, plastic spacers. These bars are medium thickness. Some are thinner, some are thicker, but really uh, this mounting hardware has been designed to work on a huge variety of bars, so really versatile. And the, uh, this rear mounting plate can micro adjust to match up with a wide range of different uh, bar spacing. That bar spacing is a distance from the front to the rear bar, so 
if yours are spaced way out for a kayak or something like that, then um, you should have no problem just bringing this to the to the end and getting uh, you know not having to readjust your bars. But uh, but there is definitely a range that it has to be within. We can actually measure that out and find out what that range is. Okay, so let me get this all the way unscrewed. I think we just about got it. And it's definitely a long screw. Okay, uh, there it is. Okay, so I'm gonna lift it back up, bring it over the bar, back underneath, and we're just about done now. There we go. I wanna make sure that these, these screws here are evenly spaced so there's the same amount of space in the front and the back um, you don't want those scratching against your bars so let's do that on the front and then on the back make a visual or measure out the distance from the from the side of the tray to the end of the bar from the side of here to the end of the bar make sure you've got it facing uh, it's not skewed on the roof that's important and there you have it get these cranked down tight. That feels good. And on the front, finish these off. A lot of times here in the shop we'll use a, a cordless drill with uh, the appropriate hex attachment to it. Speeds this up quite a bit. Um, but really in this video we wanted to show exactly how a consumer would um, assemble and install this and see that it's doable even sight unseen the first time you notice I didn't even look at the instruction manual um, so that's of course something you always want to look at and familiarize yourself with in advance um, but it's a pretty darn easy rack to set up okay so now We've got a good firm attachment. The ratcheting arm in uh, transit without a bike, you just want to bring that down in that position. I'm going to relocate those right about there. Uh, so that's, that's where you want it. It sits relatively flat. Um, also, you have this, rear, this front wheel holder that can rotate down. So really, the overall height is pretty darn low profile for an upright carrier. And uh, so it makes for a, you know, a great addition to your roof rack. Okay, lastly, I want to go ahead and just go ahead and load up a bike and let you see how a bike's uh, uh, lifted and, and uh, held up on this carrier. So to do that, I first want to get the rack ready to accept the bike by putting this back forward again and extending out the arm. I'm pressing the blue button that extends that arm out. I'll bring the wheel chuck back up into the vertical position. I'm going to open up both, both straps and now I'm ready to actually load a bike onto the carrier. Now to do that, I'm gonna grab the bike at the lowest part of the frame that I can, I get good stability. So here I am, I'm gonna grab it at the lowest part of the rear triangle and lowest part of the fork, lift up the lightweight front end, and then I'm gonna get that rear wheel into the rear wheel holder first, and then get the front wheel up. And as you see, I'm moving my rear hand to the uh, center of the bike, and I'm gonna step up. And so now we got it in position. Got the next step is grab that handle, bring it up, and you want that ratchet to ratchet down um, as close to the first point of contact as you can without it actually touching. And also, that V-shape hook, you want to make sure that the tire is in the top of the V. So I got it in place, and now I'm just going to grab it and give it another couple good firm clicks. And there we go. we got a good solid connection there. Next, look for the, rear ac uh, the front axle here and line up your wheel strap with that axle. If you can, just run that through those uh, spokes and then give it a firm click. Same thing on the back, and here's uh, an exactly that 
example that we discussed earlier where the rear wheel is right in the near vicinity of the of the uh, bar so you can have this this strap directly over that if need be and I'll just run it right about there and it could even come out directly over the bar and that just flares over but right about there feels real good okay um, the only thing we didn't do is let me grab that cover plate that cover plate goes up front and there it goes, snaps down. So again, lock them here and here for the best security for sure. Those locks are purchased separately. They're very reasonable in price. Rocky Mounts is known for offering products at a, at a really good value. Um, but that is, uh, that is now ready for transport. Always watch your overall height. Watch out for private garages, commercial garages, uh, low branches, and you're ready to hit the trail or the road on your next bike adventure. I'm Paul with RackOutfitters.com. Thanks for watching.